Have you ever wondered why there are four accounts of the life of Jesus in the New Testament? I mean, why do we need four? I mean, wouldn't one be okay? Or maybe two? Why would God go out of his way to put four Gospels in the Bible? Let's talk about it. We're in a push to get to 200 subscribers before the end of the year. If you haven't subscribed yet, would you consider doing so? It's a small action on your part that means a big deal to me. So, thank you in advance. Seriously, you guys are the best. Okay, let's talk about the four Gospels in the Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Why would God want to include four different accounts of Jesus' life? Isn't that wasted space in the Bible? I mean, we've all traveled somewhere before and had to pack a bag. Now, you can't take everything when you travel. You're limited by the size of your bag and by the weight of the bag if you're flying. There are certain things that you need to make sure that you pack before you bring along duplicates of anything. For instance, you'll want to make sure that you have enough shirts before you pack your second, third, or fourth pairs of shoes, right? So, why did God pack four gospel accounts into the Bible? He had to have a purpose, right? Before we jump into it, let me know which one is your favorite of the gospel accounts. Is it Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John? Now, it may sound silly, but liking and commenting on these videos really, really helps. It lets YouTube know that this video is worth promoting. So if you think more people could benefit from this video, go ahead and like it here on YouTube and leave a comment below. Which of the four gospels are your favorite? favorite. So why four Gospels? Now we don't know for sure, but I think we have some really good ideas as to why God did it this way. Now this is a duh statement, but Christ is the central figure of Christianity. So it makes sense that a large bulk of the New Testament would be biographies of him. Today even there are multiple biographies of famous people. George Washington has over 5,000 biographies on Amazon. Steve Jobs and Walt Disney each have a thousand biographies on Amazon. Even Johnny Cash has over 400 biographies on Amazon. Here's the thing, each of those biographies are unique. Yes, all 5,000 are about one man, George Washington, but they all have a unique take on his life. It's the same for the accounts of Jesus. They all tell the same story about the same guy, but each from a different perspective. That's why even when we see unique gospel writers write about the same event, different details come to light each time. John Burleson, my pastor while I was in high school, put it like this once in a sermon. If something is broken in my house and I have to interview my two sons about what happened, I'd expect to hear similar but not the exact same stories. Each boy will tell it his way using his personality and I'll get different details in each story. Having two accounts on what happened gets us to the actual truth. If their stories are identical, down to the very last detail, I will know they rehearsed their story and it's a lie. I thought that was a great way to explain it, and that's probably why I have remembered it for 20 years. We can trust the four accounts of Jesus' life because they all tell the same story about the same person, but with different perspectives and details. So why do we have four Gospels? So that we can get four unique perspectives on Jesus, all recorded by reputable people, all within the same generation that actually saw Jesus. That's what Luke was getting at in the first four verses of his gospel. He wrote this, Many people have set out to write accounts about the events that have been fulfilled among us. Now, among us. He's saying all the gospels were written while people that experienced Christ were still alive, meaning that if these claims were false, they could have been disputed by eyewitnesses. He continues, They used the eyewitness reports. Now, note that. They used eyewitness reports circulating among us from the early disciples, having carefully investigated everything from the beginning. Now, Luke was an academic and he was a researcher, so he hunted down those leads and he verified those claims. He said, I have also decided to write an accurate account for you, most honorable Theophilus, so that you can be certain of everything that you were taught. Now, who is Theophilus? Well, it's a great question. Check out this podcast that I did with the lead pastor of Antioch on this subject, it'll be linked in the description below. So these four biographies were either written by eyewitnesses or were written by people who interviewed eyewitnesses to give us similar but intentionally unique accounts of the life of Jesus. Let's quickly look over these four and see what makes them each unique. Let's start with Matthew. Matthew was a disciple of Jesus and therefore he was an eyewitness himself. He was a Jewish man who grew up steeped in the Old Testament and the prophecies about the coming Messiah. 
In many ways, the Gospel of Matthew is the connecting link between the Old Testament and the New Testament, making the original intended audience Jewish people, because, through his unique perspective, he proves that Jesus is the promised Messiah. The major theme of the Gospel is that Jesus is King and has an eternal kingdom. That's why Matthew's genealogy of Jesus connects to King David and to Abraham. Up next is Mark. Now here's a funny trick that you can play on people. Ask them to name four of Jesus' 12 disciples. Most people will say Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You know, the four writers of the Gospels. But they would be wrong. Mark and Luke were not part of the 12 disciples. Mark was born roughly 15 years after Jesus, making him in his late teens during the ministry of Jesus. Now he had two names, John and Mark. John Mark. John being Hebrew and Mark being Greek. You can actually find him in Acts 15 where he tags along with Paul and his cousin Barnabas. So where did he get his information when writing his gospel? He actually got it from Peter. Mark and Peter were close friends and they shared some common personality traits like being action-oriented and pretty impulsive. That's why Mark's gospel is the shortest contains no Christmas story, and frequently uses words like then, at once, and immediately. If you like getting to the point, Mark is your man, and the gospel of Mark is your gospel. His unique perspective was bridging the information gap between the Jewish Messiah and the Gentile, the, the non-Jewish Roman people. Being heavily influenced by Peter, the guy who was shocked when Jesus washed his feet, Mark focuses on Jesus as the ultimate servant. Batting third is Luke. Being an academic and a researcher, it is the longest, most comprehensive gospel. It is the first of a two-part account. Part one, Luke, is the account of Jesus' life. Part two, Acts, is the account of the early church. Now, if you read them back to back, it is fascinating because they were meant to be read together. Concerning heritage, Matthew was all Jewish, Mark was a blend of Jewish and Greek, but Luke, he was all Greek. As a matter of fact, Luke is the only non-Jewish author of any part of the Bible. Luke never met nor saw Jesus. He probably came to Christ as a result of the ministry of Paul. His unique biography of Jesus is very investigatory, very methodical, well-researched, and academic. When I was in Bible college and was studying Greek, I would pray that our exams would not be anything from Luke's writings because all of his words were big, high-end words. I wanted our exams to be from Peter or from John, guys who were fishermen by trade and used very simple language. Luke wrote to an educated Greek audience and focused on Jesus being the Son of Man. That's why Luke's genealogy goes all the way back to Adam. Last but not least is John. John was a disciple of Jesus, and he wrote his eyewitness account after the other three were written. The first three Gospels are often called the Synoptic Gospels because they share a lot of the same events from the life of Christ. John is different. Instead of retelling the story for a fourth time, his unique perspective is that he tells us what the life of Christ means. His approach is very theological as opposed to strictly stating facts. In Matthew, we see Jesus as king. In Mark, we see Jesus as the servant. In Luke, we see Jesus as the son of man. In John, however, we see that Jesus is God. The divinity of Christ is central to this gospel. And like Mark, John doesn't have a genealogy. Instead, John goes all the way back, further than the beginning. The first verse of the gospel of John says this, In the beginning, the word, talking about Jesus, already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. You know, as God would have it, this YouTube video, planned months in advance, comes out just after my pastor gave a very similar message this past Sunday. If you would like to hear that message, and I highly recommend it, I'll have it linked below. Just like how the four Gospels tell the same story about the same person, but each with a different perspective and details, you'll see that we present the same information, each with differing details and different perspectives. It's kind of neat how God works, isn't it? So what does this mean for us? It means that you can trust the accounts of the Gospels, the biographies of Jesus. God intended that all four be included in Scripture, not only to buttress each other, but to also bring out the unique details of the life of Jesus. Jesus is the King, the Servant, the Son of Man, and God Himself. 
He fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies. A video coming soon on that. He completed his mission. He was the perfect man, and he is the divine Son of God. That is who Jesus is. Hey, I hope you learned something in this video. If you did, would you please consider sharing it? And subscribe so that you can catch the next Bible Tidbits video when it comes out on Thursday. Now, I know in this season, a lot of people are looking for a great organization to financially support. For years now, my church, Antioch Georgetown, has supported LifeWord, and I could not be any more thankful that they do so. LifeWord is a media ministry that tells the story of Jesus all over the world in many languages and in many contexts. And just as Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all told the story of Jesus in a way that their particular audiences would understand, so LifeWord presents the good news of Jesus in a unique way to hundreds of people groups around the world. If you would like to learn more and to become a partner with LifeWord, visit lifeword.org. See you next time. Grace and peace.